Hey, I'm Warren Sprouse. I'm the host of the Bible Forum here every Sunday night from 8 to 10 p.m. Uh, right here on the BibleForum.net. And we talk about issues. We talk about life from a biblical perspective. This is Fourth of July weekend, and I couldn't resist. I have to read to you the Paul Harvey Declaration uh, that he issued back in 1974 relative to the signers of the Declaration of Independence. Talking about the high price that these men paid, those who signed this declaration, some actually dying as a result. Paul Harvey wrote, They had learned that liberty is so much more important than security that they pledge their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. Of the 56 signers of the Declaration, few were long to survive. Five were captured by the British and tortured before they died. Twelve had their homes from Rhode Island to Charleston sacked and looted, occupied by the enemy, or burned. Two of them lost their sons in the army. One had two sons captured. Nine of the 56 died in the war from its hardships or from its more merciful bullets. I don't know what impression you'd had of these men who met that hot summer in Philadelphia, but I think it's important this 4th of July that we remember this about them. They were not poor men. They were not wild-eyed pirates. These were men of means. These were rich men, most of them, who enjoyed much ease and luxury in personal living. Not hungry men, prosperous men, wealthy landowners, substantially secure in their prosperity. But they considered liberty this is as much as I shall say of it. They had learned that liberty is so much more important than security, that they pledge their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. And they fulfilled that pledge. They paid the price, and freedom was born. Paul Harvey details the sacrifices of these men who signed the document on July 4, 1776, declaring their independence from the British and establishing foundation for a nation where each citizen is endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Signer Carter Braxton of Virginia lost his property and fortune and died in rags. Thomas McKean of Delaware was so harassed by the enemy that he was forced to move his family five times in five months. He served in Congress without pay, his family in poverty and hiding. John Hart was driven from his wife's bedside while she lay dying. Their 13 children fled in all directions for their lives. His fields and gristmill were laid waste. For more than a year, he lived in forests and caves and returned home after the war to find his wife dead, his children gone, his properties gone. He died a few weeks later of exhaustion and a broken heart. And right above the 56 signatures on that document, it read, And for the support of this declaration... With a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. This from men in another century, another generation. Men who saw very clearly what Great Britain was trying to do, who felt intensely the burden of unjust taxation, of the abuse of power from a government, and we're willing to stand up and say, that's enough. Would that we had men and women of that
character of that ilk today in a time when we are suffering almost as badly as these folks did in 1775. 